Hello guys and welcome to my first tutorial. In this tutorial we will make a cool grocery list application which you can see here um, where you can enter your fruit you want to buy at the grocery store and it will use um, the room persistence library to store everything in, a, in an SQLite database and we will make the whole app based on the MVVM pattern um, so you will definitely learn a lot about that and we will for example we can click on that plus button here to add a new shopping item let's say um, we are really hungry let we want to buy some melons let's say 25 25 melons for breakfast that sounds good and as you see we added the melons here and every item has a minus and a plus button here where we can um, modify the amount so let's say okay we're not that hungry um, to eat 25 melons for breakfast then you can um, click on the minus button and it will be updated live in our database and if you say um, I don't like melons for breakfast then you can delete that entry and it will be updated in the database so it is a real database not just inserted in the recycler view here um, if you if we um, close the app and we open it and you see that the entries are still there and it is all saved all right so what will you learn if you follow through this tutorial series first of all you will learn a lot about the MVVM pattern and why you should use that and what that actually is if you have never heard anything about design patterns or MVVM then that's completely fine I will um, explain everything in detail and this is basically a beginner tutorial so you don't really have to know anything about MVVM. Secondly, you will learn the basics about the Room Persistence Library, which is a library that makes it very easy to implement SQLite databases in your application. We will use it to store the shopping entries and you will learn how to insert data in your database to update it and to delete it of course and you will also learn how to query your data with your own SQL, uh, SQL queries. Third you will learn the basics about coroutines and Kotlin, what we will use them for, why we have to use them and why I think that they are one of the main reasons you should uh, switch to Kotlin if you still code in Java because I, I really like them and they are a really cool feature of Kotlin so you should definitely check them out and I will explain them more in detail if we go on and if we really need them later. And finally you will learn the fundamentals about the Kotlin framework and how to do dependency injection with that and what dependency injection actually is, why we need it and why we should use it. You've probably heard of um, Dagger before, which is also a framework to do dependency injection, but it's a more advanced version of it. So for our purpose, the Kotlin framework will be enough. All right, so the intention of design patterns is to, to have a reusable solution for common problems in designing software and it basically describes the relationship between your classes, your interfaces and objects. And every time you want to make a bigger and more complex project, um, it would be really confusing to put all your code in activities. So that is why we want to have a consistent pattern that helps us uh, to organize our code and also make it understandable for other developers. In the following I will explain the basic architecture of the MVVM pattern. First of all our activity of fragment is responsible for holding all of our UI elements and views but every of our activities in fragments um, also holds an instance of a view model. The view model is basically a class that provides the data for a specific UI component and it is responsible for calling other components, which I will explain in a sec, 
to load the data and forward it to our activity of fragment. The view model does not know anything about our UI components like our views because they are handled in the activity of fragment class. Inside the view model box, you probably already noticed a little live data box. Live data belongs to the Android architectural components, which is an observable data holder class that is lifecycle aware, which is really awesome because lifecycle awareness means that it um, only updates observers that are in, in an active lifecycle state. So normally when you rotate the device, the activity is recreated. So uncreate is called again which resets all your UI components. But with live data, this won't happen because the view model is not an activity class, so it does not have an own life cycle, which means that every time our activity is recreated, it will immediately receive the current data from the view model. Nevertheless, the view model does not get its data directly from the database. Instead, it gets it from the repository, as you can see here, the repository is basically another class we have to implement in our project that fetches the data from the model and our remote data source, which is basically a web service. But for our example with the shopping list application, we don't need any remote data source because we don't do any network related stuff. That is something I will cover in a later tutorial, but for now we will focus on the model. The model is basically, in our case, just the database class, which implements the room database and the repository will get the data from our database class. So I hope that this little explanation of MVVM helped you to get a general understanding of it, but you don't really have to completely understand it for now. Um, you will actually really understand it at the point where you implement it for yourself and internalize everything. But if you have any questions for now, don't mind asking them in the comments and I will try to answer them. All right, so now we can start with the project. So we go on the file, new, new project. We choose an empty activity, click on next. The name will be shopping list. Make sure the language is Kotlin. We will do that in Kotlin. And the rest is fine. So we click on finish. So in this video, I will just um, set up everything that we need, like every dependency, because we need a lot of dependencies and every other modification in the Gradle files so that everything is set up for the next video and then we can start with the real coding. All right, so we're gonna go on the, our build.gradle file, open that up and we paste our dependencies right below here. Um, you don't have to write them off because I will um, upload everything to my GitHub, which you will find the link in my description. So I will just paste them here. You'll see that's a ton of dependencies. The first one here is for room and the architectural components. Then we have some dependencies for Kotlin coroutines, the Google material design dependency, which we need for the recycler view we will use, and the view model de dependencies, and finally Kodean framework for um, dependency injection. All right, so now when we click on sync now, you will see that Gradle can't sync this because it doesn't know the keyword kept. And this is why we need to apply another plugin above here, which is this line that basically tells Gradle what that Kotlin cap plugin is, which we need here. So when we now click on try again, it should work. All right, so the Gradle sync is successful and that's basically it for this video. 
I just wanted to set up the project. So in the next video, we will start with coding. I hope you like this video. If so, comment below, hit the like button. If you don't like it, hit the dislike button. And yeah, I would be very happy about some feedback comments because this is my first video and I have never done anything like that before. And if you guys tell me what I can improve on, that would be really helpful for me because I think there's a lot I can improve on. And yeah, so have a good day and see you in the next video.